in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not and will not overcome it. We welcome you to this, our longest night service, mindful that the ancients of long ago built monuments and burial mounds to align with the rising sun at the winter solstice, to be reminded that the light does shine in the darkness, and also to be reminded that that is the point at which the light begins to grow. We as Christians come on Christmas and at this longest night service to align ourselves with another light, the light that does shine in the darkness, the light that does promise that the light will overcome the darkness. And so we come tonight bringing our own sense of darkness, our own worries about our uh, point and position in life, our own sense of loneliness, our own sense of grief, all of those moments that may remind us of one who has no longer here and who leaves behind an empty space. We come this night to find once again the light that shines in that darkness and promises to always be with us. A couple of uh, uh, service notes for you to keep in mind later in the service. Uh, we will be inviting you to come forward to light candles here at the table in front of the lectern. Sarah and I will be here to assist you. And we will um, invite you to light the candles uh, from the back of the table to the front, um, just to protect your little hands there. And as well, we invite you to light one, perhaps two candles uh, in order to make sure that other candles remain for those that may be behind you. And then at the conclusion of the service, uh, we invite you uh, following the service as you make to remain here for as long as you wish, uh, just to sit in the quiet, but also as you leave to make sure you take with you a little pocket cross that may remind you of this night it may remind you of that light that shines of the darkness and may remind you of God's ever loving presence. And also pastors will be available in the chapel reception room just to the right as you go out uh, to pray with you if you so desire to have us pray with you uh, or perhaps even to anoint you with oil if that be your desire as well. So you are welcome to join us there. Will you please join me in our litany of the lighting of the Advent candle? We light our first candle, a single light that the deepest darkness cannot conquer, small, insignificant, but a sign of hope. Let it speak to us of the tiny flame of hope buried within us, the seven little lights that the Jesus we extinguish by all that light has thrown at us. We light our second candle, a companion to the first, equally small, equally insignificant, but witnessing to hope that another light brings.
We light our third candle, recalling nights of watching and waiting, sleepless, anxious when dawn seemed to ebb further from the horizon and hope seemed forlorn. We light our fourth candle, marking the closing of the Advent season and the immediacy of Christmas. A time of peace and joy we may not ourselves feel able to welcome as our spirits dwell in dark and winteriness. Let it speak to us of hope of being together. into being and who knows each one of us I invite you to remain seated for the hymn
A reading from Lamentations in its third chapter, beginning at the first verse. Hear the word of the Lord. I am one who has seen affliction under the rod of God's wrath. He has driven and brought me into darkness without any light. Against me alone he turns his hand again and again all day long. The thought of my affliction and my homelessness is wormwood and gall. My soul continually thinks of it and is bowed down within me. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Come Now, a poem by George MacDonald. Come now, live in us. Let us stay in you, since if we be all in you, we cannot be far from one another, though some may be in heaven and some upon earth.
The late 70s and early 80s were my elementary school years. And in the cold Canada winters, it meant that we would walk home from school in the dark. A thick layer of snow was already covering the ground in December. In later mo winter months, we'd take our time and go sliding down hills as we made our way home. But in December, we always hurried after school. After putting on the full snow gear, snow pants, heavy boots, scarf, jacket, mittens, hat, I'd walk the five minutes with purpose toward my house. Homework and early dinner. And then my brother and I would gather in front of the TV because every night until Christmas, there would be a special cartoon presentation beginning at 6 p.m. Every household with children would do the same. And the next day, we'd talk about it at school. Charlie Brown, Garfield, and many fairy tales made into, made into cartoons, all broadcast in French, whether translated or original, and never the Disney versions, always the original stories. One that came back most years was the tale of the Little Match Girl, an 1846 dark story by Hans Christian Andersen. In those days, even as children, we were not shielded from sad endings. It is the story of a little girl who goes out in the cold on New Year's Eve trying to get a little money for her family by selling matches she loses her shoes on the way, and nobody is interested in buying anything from her. Everyone is too busy to see her in her distress. After failing to sell anything and realizing that everyone's gathering to celebrate with a festive meal and frozen from a day spent outside shoeless, the little match girl sits in a dark alley and wonders how angry her dad will be that she hasn't sold any matches. She's too afraid to go home, as well as too frozen to go anywhere. So she decides to light a match, one precious match, to see if she will feel warmer. Instantly, she pictures herself in front of a wood-burning stove, and warmth fills her body. Peace comes to her until the match runs out. She lights another match, and through this flame, she sees an amazing table with a hot meal waiting for her. So much happiness through this light, her hunger disappears by simply looking at the scrumptious spread in front of her. It looks amazing, but the flame goes out. She lights another, and now she can see a glorious Christmas tree through the flame, so big and so colorful, filled with wonderful lights. She's never seen anything like this. Too soon, the flame goes out. So she lights another match and sees the one person in the world who has loved her most, her grandmother, who had recently passed. And now she's filled with the warmest of all lights. When the flame goes out in order to see her grandmother again and longer, she lights the rest of her matches. And the most incredible glow surrounds her. Her grandmother is right there with her, hugging her. And there's no more cold, no more hunger, and no more fear. Happiness completely fills her. In the morning, a crowd gathers around the lifeless body of a little shoeless girl, wondering what in the world happened to her. Well, I warned you that this has a sad ending. No child protection services. Nobody ever saw her freezing barefoot on the streets. In 1846, things must have been different. But what stayed with me as a child was the hope that she would get from one little flame 
the glorious images that would fill her heart and warm her soul despite the darkness around her. At home, there would be no festivities, no laughter or feast, only scolding for not providing enough. But in the flame, though alone, she found joy, hope, peace, and love. On this longest night of the year and during the holidays, we might feel the raw cold of the season the kind of cold that's not measured by a thermometer. We might feel the darkness. We might feel solitude, sadness, longing for warmth in our soul, longing for those we miss and love, longing for different times. But for us, it is different. There is a greater light with the coming of the light, with God moving into the world through the incarnation of our Lord Jesus, everything is sure to be different. This light, the light that was here from the beginning when God created the earth, this light is now the living and incarnate light in which we place our hope. And unlike the tale by Anderson, the light is still here. The flame does not burn out. It stays with you, it stays with me. And it is a light that helps us see other people's burning light. And that is why together, together we light a candle or two this evening. And in each flame that comes to life, we see our own precious memories, gentle images that warm our souls, as each new flame is born, producing a unique and delightful image coming from our own past. This individual image is now joined to all the others and we create this beautiful light together. We are together in our joys and in our sorrows. And then you see that you do not walk alone that you are not standing in the cold by yourself. You are seen, you are heard. The light of Christ burns in you and through us for all to see the path out of the darkness. Let us pray. God of love, bring your hope in this, this, in this dark night, we pray. May each flame that comes from our pain bring comfort and peace this evening, and may our suffering be lessened by knowing that we walk together in this darkness, led by your healing light. Soften our hearts, fill us with gentleness as we hold on to sweet memories and as we allow ourselves to feel them to the fullest. Be with us this day and in the days to come, Give us strength and courage to face each day with you as our great healer. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And now we invite you to come forward as you feel led.
and now receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.